Hey, it's Mini Chocobo, and welcome to my guide on how to complete beginner clue scrolls the most efficient way possible. Since this video focuses on efficiency, it's definitely going to have some higher level transportation methods as well as items required. If you're not a high level, this does not mean this video is not for you, but you may have to come up with some alternatives which will slow down your clues per hour. Since people will be clicking on this video with different levels of knowledge of beginner clues, I've gone ahead and added timestamps in the description as well as the pinned comment of this video. For example, if you're just looking for the efficient Charlie method as well as the efficient hot and cold method, you'll be able to skip to those right now. Without further ado, if you are new to beginner clues, I hope you enjoy the video and I will see you at the end. These are the skill requirements for beginner clue scrolls. I would like to add on that you should get 12 construction for the three hidey holes which are located throughout Gilnor. For the emote clues, the six items you will need are a gold ring, a gold necklace, a chef's hat, a red cape, a bronze axe and leather boots, as well as you're going to want to have 6 normal planks and 30 steel nails to actually make the hidey hole. Don't forget your saw and hammer as well. We don't want to go ahead and leave the grand exchange just yet. There are still some other items we will need for the Charlie the Tramp steps, as well as there's some items such as teleport tablets which we'll want to pick up now to save us some time while actually doing clue scrolls. Don't forget that I have a full item list in the description of this video if you don't want to have to go ahead and rewatch this over and over to figure out what items you're going to need. Now I'm going to go ahead and go into the requirements and items needed for maximum efficiency. The first of these and the most important is the Varrock Hard Diary for the Skull Scepter imbued. This allows you to teleport into the Barbarian Village, which is very, very useful for a lot of beginner clue steps. It should be noted that you do actually need an Authenticator as well as boots from the Security Stronghold to actually get this after completing the Varrock Hard Diary though. In my gear setup, I do not have a Draymond or a Lunar Staff on, but this will assume that you have access to Fairy Rings, and also I personally have the Lumbridge Elite Diary done, so I do not need either one of those staffs in my inventory. Also, it would be very useful to have a Fairy Ring in your house, and or use the Quest Cape to teleport to a Fairy Ring close by. A construction cape is very useful just for the fact that you will have unlimited teleports to your house, and also it's very useful for easy clue scrolls, which you'll be doing intermittently with beginner clues doing this method. Now I'm going to go ahead and go into some Iron Man specific requirements. For normal accounts, you can just go ahead and buy everything here, but for Iron Man, you will have to acquire these items yourself. The first of these being just normal glories or an eternal glory, also rings of dueling, and then also if you're an Iron Man, you should have an ancient altar, and if you do not have one of these, you must have mysterious emblems to turn into bounty hunter points to buy Lassar teleports in Edgeville. Also, if you have a high enough construction level, the occult altar to get to Drake Draenor Manor is very efficient as well, and or you can make Draenor Manor teleport tabs. You'll need a way to get to the Champions Guild relatively fast, so having a jewelry box in your house to teleport to there and or having a RuneScape Chronicle will be very useful, as well as having a Spirit Tree in Port Serum if possible. If you don't have a Spirit Tree in Port Serum, you can rely on the Rat Pits Teleport to Port Serum, but it will be a bit slower because you'll probably get that step more than once every 20 minutes. Last but not least, having a Senestine teleport portal in your house will save you a couple of seconds on a specific step, which I'll show later on. So if you want to go ahead and get that, that is optional, but it will save you a little bit of time. In short, it is a lot of items, and that's why you're going to have a checklist below just so you don't miss anything. Now let's go ahead and talk about the most efficient ways to obtain beginner clue scrolls. The first of these being Young Implings. Young Implings cost approximately 3.2k in the GE currently, and have a 1 in 25 chance of dropping an easy clue scroll. They also have an unknown drop rate of beginner clue scrolls, which I estimate to be around 1 in 35. Now this drop rate for beginner clues is not confirmed, but after opening 4,000 Implings, I managed to receive 103 beginner clues as well as 139 easy clues. I can't say for certain that this is the drop rate, but I am pretty confident that I get around 87 to 90% of the total expected amount of clue scrolls I should be getting from Implings, simply because this is what I've always usually gotten in the past. Some general advice when opening young Implings, I would definitely recommend filling up your bank using bank fillers. Just because you'll be going through so many of them, you'll want to be able to use the bank all option while having your inventory without having to always withdraw everything over and over. So this is definitely the fastest method of obtaining obtaining beginner clue scrolls, as well as obtaining easy clues. I would estimate you can do around 45 clues on average an hour, regardless of the steps that you receive. 
just because of how quickly you can do this. The second method of obtaining beginner clues is one killing minotaurs. So I went ahead and asked one of the top ranked beginner clue scroll completers, Renewed, who happens to actually be an ultimate Iron Man as well. And he went ahead and told me that minotaurs are definitely more efficient than goblins simply because they drop right skull half pieces. As I mentioned earlier, that imbued Skull Scepter you will be using a lot, so having extra teleports is very crucial. Regardless of any method you plan on doing beginner clues with, I would always recommend at least doing Minotaurs for your first 10 beginner clues just to stockpile a bunch of right Skull Halves for your Skull Scepter. Each right Skull Scepter piece will give three charges to the scepter and the scepter can hold a total of 12 charges. You can hold in your inventory multiple of these items at a time as well as they will continue dropping so don't worry too much about if you hit the maximum charges of 12 just go ahead and bank them. Last but not least you can do goblins which I would also use the security stronghold for but I would recommend sticking to minotaurs unless you'd like to also acquire a goblin champion scroll. While acquiring a goblin champion scroll though, I definitely would recommend doing those instead of minotaurs, especially if you already have skull scepter charges. Now that we know all of the most efficient ways of acquiring beginner clues, let's go ahead and actually get into the steps of each clue and how to do them most efficiently. Charlie the Tramp is located straight south of the Varrock teleport spot, and he is essentially a Sherlock, but for free-to-play tasks. In my bank, I go ahead and keep a bunch of different items to prepare for each of his tasks, that way I don't have to go to the Grand Exchange and buy them every time he asks for a different item. The most efficient way to lay out your bank for this would be to have all of the items that are relevant to each other next to each other, so for example like fishing rod, fishing bait, logs, tinderbox, and raw fish, hammer, and iron bar, etc. The smithing, crafting, and cooking steps are all pretty straightforward. You just want to go ahead and teleport to the closest bank, withdraw the items you need, teleport back to Varrock, and complete your task. If it is a specifically a smithing step, you want to just go ahead and run northeast of the Varrock teleport spot, and there's an anvil right there, and then you head back to Charlie. If he asks you to mine an iron ore, there is actually iron ore southwest of Charlie the Tramp next to the champion skills, so you don't even have to teleport, and then you just go run back with it. And last but not least, there's the two fishing steps. If he happens to ask you to fish a trout, you go ahead and use your Skull Scepter and teleport to the Barbarian Village, and then to the east there are some fishing spots to go ahead and fly fish a trout. If he happens to ask you for a herring, you want to go ahead and use a Karamja teleport on a glory, run to where the lobsters are, and use the bait fishing spot until you catch a herring. Keep in mind you can also catch a sardine there, so it might take you a couple of bait. Now let's move on to the hot and cold steps of beginner clue scrolls. The nice thing about beginner clue hot and cold steps are there are only five locations where they can appear. This is where those Lassar teleports and those Draenor Manor teleports are going to come in very handy. The hot and cold method is very linear and you will always know where the location of it is within two teleports. First off, if you've never done a beginner clue before, you're going to go need to get an orb from Reldo in the Varrock library and he will give you the hot and cold orb which will tell you whether you are getting closer to the clue spot or farther away. Essentially, what you're going to do is first teleport to the all Cared Duel Arena. In the teleport spot of the all Cared Duel Arena, you then will click on the orb that you got from Reldo. Once you click on the device, pay attention to your chat box because you'll be getting one of four messages which will determine exactly where your clue step is. Option one, if the device is hot, then you have the all carried step which is shown on screen here. If the device is warm, you then have the cow pen which is next to the Lumbridge Mill. If the device is cold, that means you got the glory teleport spot to Draenor and it's in the wheat field right to the north of it. Last but not least, if the device is very cold, then you'll need to then teleport to Draenor and test the device again. It's essentially a 50-50 between the Draenor Manor and the Ice Mountain. If you don't want to waste one of your teleport tabs, simply use a Glory Teleport to Draenor and use your Strange Device. If the device is warm, then you know it's the Draenor Manor Teleport, and if the device is still very cold, then you know to go to the Ice Mountain Teleport. Just so you don't have to go ahead and rewatch this over and over, I'm going to go ahead and throw this diagram in the description in the form of an imager link, just so you can have it on your other screen when first doing these clue scrolls. Now we're going to go ahead and go over some of the random miscellaneous steps that you can go ahead and save a bit of time on. 
Keep in mind that this is not a guide on the exact areas of every location. I just wanted to go ahead and show the fastest ways to get to each of these points. So I'm just going to have each of the clips playing in the background pretty sped up. I plan on doing a very big clue scroll opening. I have around 500 easy caskets in the bank and I plan on getting a bunch of mediums, beginners, hards, elites, and masters as well. So look forward to doing that. If you made it to the end of this video, I appreciate you a lot. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you can do beginner clues a little bit more efficiently.